All right, season three is here. That means there's a lot of new content to go over. Let's hop right into the collections. And most of you already know if you're following social media, you're expecting a pretty crazy and wild season. A lot of out of player, sorry, out of position players that we're gonna have to use due to the cards that are available. All right, now right now, if you hop into the game, you might notice there's some bugs and that's to be expected. They'll fix this right away. But one of the bugs is all four of your wildcard spots are available right now. I'm sure they'll fix that within like a couple of hours. So don't get your hopes up. But hopping right into season three collection, if you guys got done season one and season two, uh, or if you only got one or two players, you know you know there's a lot of cards to collect, but there's a lot of different game modes to get the cards. We'll, we'll go over them. First card, so obviously now you might know there's two pages to each collection as well. First card is going to give you a wild card spot, and then 15 cards will get you a wild card spot. And just at 40 cards, you're going to get your first 99 overall card, and it's going to be a, a pretty popular card. 99 Hall of Fame Mariano Rivera. Cutter, fastball, sinker, slider, change up. Everyone already has the 93 overall Mo in their bullpen and still use him. So if you're getting away with using 93 overalls, uh, then this card's going to be pretty OP and elite. And um, it's going to be intimidating to face. Now, another intimidating card to face will be in the BR collection reward in the bullpen. And I'll get to that right after this collection. But we also have another wild card spot at 50 cards. A 99 Jackie Robinson, and we haven't seen a good Jackie Robinson this good since MLB The Show 22 when he got that all-star LA, you know, all-star game card. Uh, this card's going to be incredible, and he's going to be a balanced hitter and 125 contact both sides. 125 vision, max clutch, obviously always has great speed. He has 99 bunt and drag bunt. 91 and 90 power, once you get him to P5, and I'm sure a lot of people will, you know, he's going to be 96 and 95. He can play a lot of all the infield positions and left field. So that makes him super versatile. Let's see what his quirks are. He's got a lot of good ones. So this is probably one of the best Jackies we've ever seen. The Hall of Fame card series has not disappointed so far, and I'm loving it. All right, and then the first pack at 150 cards, we got Randall Johnson. Randy Johnson is going to be, you know, just as intimidating as he was in last year's game and the year before. Fastball splitter, uh, slider, slurve. And two seam fastball. His slider comes in at 92 miles an hour. Outlier one, so only outlier on the fastball. And uh, this is not a two way card or anything. So we'll get to the out of position players in, in a minute here. I mean, what more could you ask for? It's going to be a very hard card to face. I don't know about you guys how you feel. Would you rather have a card like this, you know, every five games to, or four or five games to pitch with, or have to face this card almost every other game when you're batting? To me, like, Personally, I would rather just not face Randy. I could I, I could deal with not using him. I could wild card, you know, Roy Halladay and stuff like that. I would just I would like to avoid Randy Johnson altogether. But he's going to be very fun to pitch with. Trust me. Uh, so a lot of people might take him first. Lou Gehrig. I did get a peep at this card beforehand, and my God, they finally gave Lou Gehrig the treatment he deserves. Max contact, one nineteen and one fifteen power, and then one eighteen vision. It's basically Babe Ruth. It's just basically a Babe Ruth card with max bunt for funsies and max durability, which doesn't really matter anymore, but 70 speed. He's a pretty good fielder. He only plays first base. It's the only downside to it, but everything else, and I mean every single thing else about this card is incredible. If you have used Lou Gehrig before, you know his swing is pretty money, and it's very smooth. It's just it's, it's butter, and you can hit against lefties very easily. I would say he's a tad bit better than Babe Ruth when it comes to thinking about their swings comparatively. All right, Babe's got a decent swing, but I think Lou, um, some users might find him easier to hit lefties with Lou Gehrig. All right, all these quirks. Uh, uh, this is the most amount of quirks I've seen on a hitter, I think. All right, he's got all the good ones. Table setter, dead red, you know, rally monkey, breaking ball hitter, bad ball hitter. You're going to be hitting balls out of the zone for home runs. You're going to be hitting, you know, slurves and sliders that shrink your PCI a little bit better with Lou Gehrig. This is a guy you're going to want to pick up as quickly as you can. All right, so... It's going to be a tough choice, I think, for a lot of people between Randy and Lou Gehrig because we all know how tough pitching is in this game. Uh, but we'll see. I think these will be the first two most people will pick. And the third one is nothing to sneeze about at all. A 99 Hall of Fame Ricky Henderson. He had a great charisma card last year, charisma series, if you remember from MLB The Show 23. And then he had another one, I think it was a snapshot later in the year, it was pretty good. 118, 125 contact. He's obviously going to have max speed and stealing and base running aggressiveness. Um, also max bunt. Usually he doesn't always get the, the high bunt attribute, but this time he did. I think a lot of, you know, they realize we want to use a more fun Ricky Henderson and bunt with him sometimes and get on base or just be cheeky and do it. 
All the, all the good quirks, um, he's missing Rally Monkey, but that's about it. I don't think anyone dislikes that card, but I'm pretty sure most people will go with these two, Randy and Lou Gehrig first. All right, so that's all the packs, and I know you're looking at the collection right now. You see all these out-of-position players. We're going to get into them in a second. Let's go to the BR reward because um, I know some people, when the season starts, it's a good way to get cards, get diamonds, get stubs when you get these cards and sell them. The diamond pack... In the program, or if you go flawless, you got Alex Gordon, Felix Bautista, who will be at a really good value if you can go flawless and get these guys and sell them uh, for the beginning of the season, right? I, it's weird how I feel about this because I feel like you could kind of just skip a couple of days or even like maybe two weeks of this and wait till they release more 97s and 99s and start playing. But I think it would be a really good idea to get these cards because obviously, one, you're going to need them for the collection, but two, they're going to come in handy for things like events. Your, you know, your lineups can be sneaky with some of these guys like Alex Gordon. Uh, Max Fielding, he's always been a great fielder. Some people like his swing, some people don't. I still think he has good value at this point in the season. Me personally, if I was going flawless and I wanted to put someone in my bullpen right away or on my squad, obviously going Felix, just one of the most intimidating pitchers, not just in real life, but in this game, I he's just so glitchy, so hard to face. Um, that fastball comes at you different. Obviously, it's outlier, and then he's got the splitter slider. 97 overall, so the deficit is going to be obviously in walks per nine and control. Going to be hard to throw the strikes on the corner, but with a guy this glitchy, you probably don't really need to. So uh, I'll let you guys look at these cards themselves, but some of the 87 overalls that actually might play, they use the Bohm Chrome card, which is pretty cool. I don't see a lot of um, uh, Bowman, I meant Bowman cards, so the card art's pretty cool here, but uh, I thought this card was going to look a lot better, and it's really not, so... I'll let you guys take a look at these. You got Chili Davis, Nolan Jones, which is interesting. Jose Altuve. Uh, yeah, some of them, some of them are clearly better than others. Ranked the ranked program at 75. Yep, 75 XP, which everyone can get in the first drop, no matter how good or bad you are at ranked season games. Everyone's gonna get Bruce Sutter if you play enough innings and get the XP done. Sometimes he gets pretty, I'd say most of the time he gets a below average card. Every now and then he gets a pretty fun card. He got like a finest card maybe last year or two years ago it was pretty sneaky good uh this one i think looks pretty middle of the road or mid as everyone is saying and i i would agree with that you know only three pitches splitter fastball slider he normally doesn't get anything more than that but who knows he might be sneaky again you'll have to try to find out i can't really tell by looking at him right now we are gonna have in the pack if you get to world series over 900 rating you can get barry larkin who i think is gonna be a great value i would just probably sell him unless you really want to use him um, he's going to go up in value from that 205, I believe. 105 against both sides. Thought it would be a little bit more for a 99, but still very good. He's got a good swing. Plays his position great. Only plays shortstop. I'm sure he'll be fine out of position at second base. Uh, but then here's everything else. So this Paul O'Neill card, I've I've heard great things about his swing. I didn't really use too much of him. He had a home run derby card. I think he had a Subway Series card from the storylines. All, all, all I heard was like how great his swing was from the Yankees fans on Twitter and social media and things like that who were using him. And he had a Reds card. But this looks a lot better. I think it's better value in terms of what you're getting in attributes than Barry Larkin. Obviously more contact, more power, probably a little bit of a better swing, but it's from the left side. Not as good defensively. He cannot play first base. That is the huge bummer about this card. So you can't just kind of sneak him in there at first base. Either got to DH him, which I think is the best option, or put him in the corner outfields. Uh, he, he's not going to play well in center with 64 speed, and his fielding is pretty almost almost below average, but I would say it's just average to begin with. Um, but the max clutch, all the hitting attributes are great. So if you're a big Paul O'Neill fan, Paul O'Neill fan, you're going to like this card a lot. Okay, so special collections, you know these as usually it's the lightning reward cards. Yeah, the action figure series cards from last season, which we I'm pretty sure everyone was in agreement. This was a great step in the right direction, a great turnaround for SDS that these cards were awesome. But it was Team Affinity, and there is still a division on how people feel about Team Affinity. Um, you know, whether it's, it's boring, kind of run down, played out by now, or if it's just a solid thing we can rely on. I don't know how I feel about it. So the season three awards will have Yanir Diaz, uh, catcher. So, you know... I, Right out of the gate for every season, it's important to get a couple of positions where you get a good player, catcher, uh, bullpen pitchers, and any pitchers to begin with, really. Um, and that's it, I would say. I mean, most most players, if you get a wild card spot or two, you can put it out in the field. But catchers and all pitchers are really important early on in seasons. So it's good to give this as an option to get great contact. Catcher pop time is great. 
So let's see his fielding 99 arm with catcher pop time. He's going to be throwing runners out. Don't steal on him, I would say. All right, the out of position collection series. Now, before we get into how to get these cards, I'm pretty sure it's just Team Affinity, and we'll go into it. Let's just take a look at some of these cards. They look fun as hell. I think this is going to be a great time throughout the season. It's not like a permanent long-term thing, so I don't want everyone to freak out. I heard all the rumblings about how, how it's turning into 2K and Madden. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, without just giving bias towards MLB The Show, because I've always enjoyed it more than those other games, it truly is a little bit different when it comes to baseball. Out of position players, I don't think it'll mess up the game quite like it did for 2K and Madden. I'm not going to get deep into it, but you can kind of see how like a Yao Ming point guard with a lot of speed would be a lot different than just putting like Aaron Nola and Jacob DeGrom at shortstop. You know what I mean? Just different swings and things like that. So we'll see how it plays. We're going to evaluate it as we go. And I want you guys to comment what you think about this before we start playing and seeing what happens with all the clips online. Top collection, all 40 cards, two-way Anthony Rizzo. Let's just start with the good one. He's got a fastball, 12-6 curve, a screwball, a slider, and a sinker. Not great velocity. He did pitch in that game. He struck out. He Didn't he strike out Freddie Freeman, or was that just the rundown? I forget. He struck out someone, I believe. Hits per nine's over 100. K per nine's over 100. Walks per nine and control in the 80s, so he'll be average about dotting. It's just going to be a fun card, but I, I really like this one. Um, it's very fun, and it's, it's still powerful for early on in the season. Michael Lorenzen. Uh... Most of you, a lot of you might know from back in the day, Michael Lorenzen, like he, he works his ass off off the field and he's pretty jacked, but they would actually put him in the outfield sometimes, even when he was a relief pitcher with the Reds and uh, he could actually hit bombs. So this is a pretty realistic out of position series card that they gave him. And I love it. 115 power, 102 power. I think that's very appropriate. I think the bunting is fun with 99 bunt against both sides, 87 speed. So, you know, expect people to drag some or lay down some drag bunts for fun. No quirks. He can play all the outfield positions, and he won't be bad out there at all with 91 reaction and 81 speed. All right, so we saw a lot of pitchers going to be in the shortstop position, and here's just one of them, Hunter Green. He's going to play second and third as well. Uh, tall guy, so he's going to have a tall strike zone. I don't know how I feel about that, but we'll have to see. Bob Gibson, switch hitter, Bob Gibson. Not a lot of catcher-shortstop combos out there. Uh, Kyle Farmer comes to mind. Uh, a couple of others, but not a lot. So this is a pretty fun card to look at uh, position-wise. Hitting attributes, not not great, not terrible. It's a 96 overall card. What are you going to expect? I don't know how I feel about it, but it's only 10 cards to get him, so it's pretty easy. Now, this is all of the cards. Um, you got Syndergaard there. I'm pretty sure this is going to be Team Affinity. So let's go through all the divisions real quick. You got Manny Machado as a relief pitcher. And he's going to be dotting. 94 control, 105 walks per nine, 88 velocity. All right, only one quirk. Fastball, slurve, sinker, cutter. I think these position players in, in the bullpen are going to be the most fun cards to try out because nobody's going to have any clue how they play until we just get into it and start playing with them. Um, that card looks pretty good, though. Machado. Okay. Now, these cards are, like, kind of two-way. Like, obviously, they're position players that normally can hit, but they... They nerfed all their hitting stats. You're not going to want to hit with these cards if you if you don't have to. You know, if you can avoid hitting with these cards, that's great. Cutter Crawford. Now I heard something that they gave him Mookie Betts's exact type swing stance and swing type, uh, which would be great because Mookie's very easy to use. Now he's going to have great contact. Seventy. This looks very much like a um, old Jackie card. He's got 85 speed. He's going to have. Um, what else can I point out that's really good? 95 vision, 111 clutch. All right, Mariano Rivera. Uh, I saw a lot of the stories about how he tore his ACL in center field last time he was out there. Uh, so that might be a little bit traumatic. But this is his comeback card. Think of it that way. This is his rising from that occasion, coming back stronger and showing them, you know, who's boss out there. It actually looks like a pretty good fielder with an 88 reaction, 85 speed, 90 fielding overall, decent arm. His hitting, his hitting is not anything, um, you know, to write home about, but... It could play. Now, over 90 contact on both sides is good enough, and over 80 power, that's that's fine for 95 overall. I think a lot of people just like Mo, so you're going to see him in there. Now, the only problem is, once you get the 99 overall Hall of Fame Mariano Rivera, you cannot use this on your squad at the same time. So you won't be able to put that Hall of Fame series in center field, and you won't be able to use this card 
You can't have them both on the same team. Shane McClanahan, starting pitcher. Normally, he's going to be a first baseman, left fielder, and right fielder. And then we have Roy Halladay as a second baseman and all the infield positions besides first base, plus all the outfield positions. So this is the most versatile fielder we've seen out of positions so far. All of those hitting attributes average all across the board. Um, I'd probably avoid using him, but he's a good fill-in-the-blank spot if you need a position out there. That's the AL East. Let's go to the NL East. I'm really interested to see who they got where. Austin, Austin Riley is going to be a starting pitcher, and he's got a sinker, cutter, slurve, circle change, and a fastball. Great pitch mix. 82 velocity, similar to Rizzo. Uh, his per nines aren't as good as Rizzo's, but he's got no quirks either. Still, the pitch mix is good. Five pitches. And since he has 99 break, you know, he could still be kind of glitchy. I'll be interested to see how that plays. <laughs> They completely took away his hitting stats, like completely. Zeros all across the board, except for bunting. So, unfortunately, a guy I actually like hitting with in this game as a right-handed hitter, Austin Riley, you won't be able to hit with this card at all. Dontrell Willis. Interesting splits on the hitting with 108 contact against lefties, but 78 power against lefties. And 104 power against righties, 85 contact against righties. Weird splits. Uh, probably he's 6'4", so maybe a tall strike zone. Got a couple more quirks than the other hitting cards that are pitchers, and he can play DH, and that's it. Not great fielding at all. Jacob DeGrom, former college shortstop, so this is true to form and very accurate. Tremendous hitting stats across the board when we compare them to all the other out-of-position cards. Uh, well above average compared to them. 104, 101 contact. 102, 101 power. 100 vision, 116 clutch is awesome. 99 arm, doesn't feel great at shortstop by any means with the 70 reaction and 39 speed and 66 fielding, but he does have the arm and he can play second and third. I actually think the best position to put him at, probably third base. All right, Aaron Nola, better fielding than DeGrom, but a little bit less hitting. Um, still pretty good hitting though. 94 contact, 102 contact. 88 and 83 power, 85 vision, 95 clutch is a little low, but he's got 70 speed, 72 steal. Second and third base are his secondaries. A little less than DeGrom in the hitting terms, but better fielding, 6-2. We'll see how it plays. And then Bryce Harper as catcher. Now, he was also a high school catcher. And most of you know he got drafted out of high school and, you know, um, went in the minors. So he hasn't seen that position since he was in high school. And he has... 68 fielding, I think, oh, 57 blocking. That's not that great for a catcher, but, you know, it'll get the job done, I think. Um, more quirks than a couple of the other cards. All right, NL Central. Uh, we got Jake Arrieta as a DH. I love the 125 contact against lefties, but 104 power against righties, 94 power. 92, that's pretty good hitting. Well, max clutch as well. All right, fielding doesn't matter. It's DH and, and first base. Ellie is going to be a non-hitting starting pitcher with a slider fastball sinker circle change but this is the first position player that's a starting pitcher that actually has good velocity and he's got outlier one and outlier two so ellie de la cruz who normally is in everyone's lineup at the top of their lineup switch hitting you know no matter what kind of card he gets a lot of people just like have bias towards ellie he's going to be in almost everyone's rotation i'm assuming with that outlier slider impossible to hit if you know john donaldson then you know, then you know this is going to be a tough slider to hit, and then the fastball obviously outlier. Sinker's not outlier, but then you got the circle change coming in 86 miles an hour on average. I love it. 120 hits per nine, 56 walks per nine, and 80 control are going to be tough to throw strikes, but everything else looks great. Okay, CC Sabathia on the Brewers. I like that. Again, weird splits similar to Dontrell Willis. I'll let you look at it there. First base DH, Paul Skeens catcher. This looks fun. Great contact. This is probably the best contact we've seen out of any of these out of position cards for 95. 107, 125. Mid-80s power. Good fielding. Does he have pop time? No, no quirks, but he's got first and third secondaries. Should be a pretty good catcher. I think I'm going to eye him up too. I think I'm really liking this NL Central pack the most. I think I'm going to start with this division. All right, Mason Mi Mason Wynn, sorry. Uh, normally an outfielder or a shortstop. There. I can't remember. He's a young guy though. And he's going to be starting pitcher, 99 velocity with outlier one fastball. Then he's got a slider, circle change, cutter, sinker. Probably the next best pitch mix. Actually, it's probably the best pitch mix, but then 
next best pitcher next to Ellie De La Cruz, I think. I know this is a lot. It's going to be a long video. Adam Dunn, relief pitcher, 80 velocity, four pitch mix, hits per nine is 108, clutches 117. Home body, not bad. Uh, first base, Cy Young. I don't know. I don't know if a lot of people are going to be using this card just because they know. I, I know no one uses him uh, as a pitcher. He's only got one pretty good pitching card, which is crazy because he's literally the name of an award. But, you know, everyone's got to try out these swings. No one's really seen these guys swing. So maybe Cy Young has a glitchy swing. And, you know, all of these will play above his attributes. We'll see. I'm waiting. I'm going to wait for someone else to figure that out for me. 110 hits per nine for Riley Green. 90 velocity is not bad. With a fastball sinker slurve, circle changing cutter. This looks very Greg Maddox-esque. But he only has 79 walks per nine and 85 control. Everything else looks pretty good. Zach Grinky shortstop. Uh, a lot of people are going to love using this card. 90s across the board for contact and power. Almost over 100 power, especially when you parallel him. 95 clutch. No quirks, but he's going to be able to play catcher as a shortstop as well. And second and third. And decent fielding. 73 speed. So far, I think, I think most of these cards are better than not. I think there's only a couple of duds that you're not going to want to use. Byron Buxton, starting pitcher. So this guy, I definitely, out of all the cards that were pitchers, I expected to have at least an outlier or 99 velocity. And he does have outlier one, fastball, curveball, slider, splitter, sinker, and 106K per nine, 10, no, that's it. That's the only thing over 100. 95 hits per nine, 74 walks per nine, 80 control, 90 velo, 90 break. Not bad. All right, let's go to the West, AL West. Take a look real quick. Nolan Ryan, center fielder. 80 speed, eh, might be all right. But 95 reaction is really good for the outfield. You can play the other outfield positions and first base. Thought he had to have more power at the plate, but 91, 84, 103 contact, 97 contact, 113 clutch, 76 vision, not bad. I'm just interested. At this point, I'm more, I'm, I'm staying curious about this whole thing rather than giving it an assessment. So I'm kind of just showing you these cards. Um, not really giving my opinion on it yet. But Mike Trout's going to be starting pitcher. Low velocity for Mike Trout. Uh, sinker, circle change, slurve, slider, cutter. I like that pitch mix. Um, people underestimate a slider-slurve combo within a five-pitch mix. It's really good. All right, he he is a two-way pitcher. or Yeah, two-way player, though. So he can actually hit 93 contact, 88 contact, 100 and 101 power. Low vision, um, but he can, you know, he's 95 speed. He can play shortstop as well. So that'll be fun. 95, yeah, I think this is a good card. McGuire, starting pitcher, 90 velocity. Couple of quirks, won't be able to hit, not two way. 111 hits per nine is pretty good, 111, uh, 113 clutch. All right, another Randy Johnson card. It's gonna be pretty good hitting card, actually. 104 and 106 contact, 82, 109 power, I like that, and max clutch. So this is a pretty good hitting card for those out of position players. Four quirks, uh, home body, night player, dead red, and bad ball hitter. Center field, left field, right field, and with 61 speed and 90 reaction, I would I would leave him to the DH spot or the corner outfields because he still has a good arm. He still has good fielding rating. His accuracy is really low. I don't know how it's going to affect the meter, but uh, the throwing meter. We'll see. Let me know if you guys use him. All right. Let me know if you guys use any of these guys in the comments or you are, you already saw clips of their you know swings and things like that, and, and let me know who your favorite is. Or let me know where you also think where they messed up on these cards. Because a lot of them, I think, are pretty good. I think a couple of duds they could have done better with. Jonah Heim, third base, still catcher secondary, which is cool. So it's not really that out of position at all. This is the most, you know, not accurate card in terms of this whole card series. He has dead red and uh, day player. Not bad. Max clutch. Zach Gallon, shortstop. Uh, it's a pretty good theme with the starting pitchers being shortstops now. Decent contacts, decent, uh, you know, 70s power. Actually, this is the best fielding shortstop pitcher we have so far. All right, a couple of corks too. Pinch hitter. All right, and then we got Charlie Blackman, relief pitcher. And he's going to have 118 hits per nine and 84 velocity, but he also has 108 walks per nine with 84, or sorry, 91 control. So this is actually going to be a good card to dot with, throw strikes with, sinker cutter, circle change slider, four seam fastball. And he's a lefty. Uh, Kenley Jansen, normally a relief pitcher, going to be a catcher. Does he have any quirks? He has catcher pop time. So he could actually be the best catcher early on. Great contact, too. 112, 111, uh, 112 clutch. 
and 99 arm. So him and Yanir Diaz are going to be pretty good catchers early on in this season. All right, then we got Jake Cronenworth, normally a second baseman. He's going to be a relief pitcher with no other positions. Cannot hit fastball, slurve, splitter, cutter, good hits per nine, better K per nine, better walks per nine at 107. So you can dot with him as well. 80 control, 85 velocity, 99 break. And then last but not least, Willie Mays, third baseman. I love this. First base and shorts up secondary. Great fielding, 96 speed, and uh, decent. This is like a BR Willie hitting a tribute kind of wheel. Not bad, but a lot of quirks, so that helps a lot. All right, so that is Team Affinity. Oof. I feel like I did that in one breath. Um, we have... More to look at, though. First, let's take a look at the season awards. You're going to get JT Realmuto along the way. He still has catcher pop time. So there's three catchers with pop time right now. His hitting is, like, kind of average. So you might take one of the other ones first. But And then I already showed you near Diaz. So that's the program. If we go into the event, uh, TA1, sorry, TA Season 1, Chapter 1, TA Season 2, Chapter 1, and TA Season 3, Chapter 1, Players and Live Series. All right. Now, it says max team overall, 99 overall, but there's not all of those chapter ones in the TA are not 99 overall cards, not even close. I think they're like 89s. So this might not be the most fun event to play, but if you want the rewards, let's take a look at them. Wade Boggs, 95 overall relief pitcher with 99 velo. No outlier, but sinker, curveball, cutter, changeup, and good hits per nine, decent control and walks per nine, great clutch. Trevor Hoffman's going to be a shortstop with really good contact, 108, 125, and max clutch, uh, max bunting, 86 speed, good fielding at shortstop and second and third base. Oh, the reward path, duh. Last but not least, the the damn reward path. Um, if you had it got out to a good start like I did and did pretty much everything you could in season two, you should end up with uh, 60,000 XP, which will get you captain pack, out of position pack, Another captain pack. Jake Diekman, 95 overall. Oh, this If you don't know about Jake Diekman, Jake Diekman, it doesn't matter what number is on that diamond. If he gets the diamond card, it's going to be pretty good. But automatically, I can tell you it's going to be hard to throw strikes with that 52 walks per nine and 62 or 66 control. Either way, uh, 90 velo, 90 break, 99 break, I mean, and 99 velo. Max hits per nine, max K per nine, 116 clutch, fastball, slurve, sinker, circle change, and a funky, glitchy deliver delivery that is going to throw some people off. But you get them for free, so can't complain about that. Dansby Swanson is at 90,000. Uh, 90s across the board in terms of contact and power, except the 104 power against lefties, 60, 76 vision, good fielding, 83 speed. At 160, we'll get Craig Biggio, who's famously known for having that catcher secondary, a lot of quirks here, too, to work with. 119, 120 contact. He got a card earlier this year. The swing is a lot better than last year. So if you didn't use him because of his swing or his stance, try him out again this year. Give him a shot. I think you'll like him a lot. Hank Aaron is the reward at 350,000 XP. And I know what you're thinking automatically is they shortened the XP path from a million to 350,000. So a lot easier to grind. You'll get it done a lot faster. You'll get a great Hank Aaron card with pretty much max contact and almost max power. 115 vision, max clutch, 91 fielding. He's going to play right field, first base, left field, and center field. So he's only missing that shortstop position, but I'm just glad he got first base as a secondary. He's all quirked up. And 81 speed, 83 stealing, 81 base running aggressiveness. Might be able to take some bases off of a slow pitcher or a pitcher who has a long delivery. Um, but great Hank Aaron card. Really don't have a prediction on how the season's going to go, which is fun to me, but also leaves something up in the air. We'll see. Let me know what you guys think is going to happen in a couple of weeks from now. Are people going to be using all of their wild card spots on season two and season one, guys? Um, are we going to see a lot of out of position players or are we only going to see like one or two by the end of the season? Uh, let me know. My prediction is that we won't see all of those out of position cards, unless they start dropping more throughout the season that are actually really good. Cause the ones we've seen, they'll be good for now and they'll be fun for now. Uh, but I don't think they'll last, which is fine. They're kind of gimmicky cards anyway. All right. So let me know in the comments and, uh, I appreciate you watching like, and subscribe if you have not done that already. 
and follow the Twitch. I will, I will go in live more often. Um, and I'll see you on the next one.